Guys, I don't even know how to say this because it's very embarrassing, but my fucking mic malfunction seven minutes into this episode, which is season two, episode 11, which is by far like one of my favorite episodes so far that I was having such an amazing time watching and reacting to when I was done with the whole like hour long, cause I had so much to say in this episode, it was 42, uh, the episode was 42 minutes, but my video was about an hour. I put it in my editor, in my editing software. And I saw that after the seventh or eight minutes, there was no audio. And I looked at the video and I saw when I accidentally adjusted my mic, the wire must have disconnected. And for the rest of that episode, there was no audio. I am very sorry. Obviously, I couldn't react to it again because I've already reacted to it. Like, there was no, I, I couldn't fake it. So what we're, I'm planning to just do here is to just give a review of the episode. I am so sorry. I know that's not what y'all are here for. God, the reaction was good. My heart sank when I saw it in my uh, video and there was no audio. It was just my face just miming. So yeah. I'm very, I'm very bummed about that, but I know you guys are even way more bummed because you guys came for the reaction. So like I said, I'll just do a quick review, um, review the episode, try to like explain what I was feeling while watching it. And as well as the times I paused and conversed, um, what I was thinking at the time, I think that's the best way I can try to capture for you guys what i was feeling uh during the episode i am so sorry about this it is so embarrassing in all the two years i've been making videos on youtube this is only the second time that this has happened and is it even freaking recording right now yes god so please sit back it will be somewhat quick um just summarizing my thoughts from the episode and i will attach episode 12 the finale to this one as well so I hope you guys are not too disappointed this god that was such a good video but here we go this is the best i can do i would also try to include some of the first like seven or eight minutes that caught my audio inside but the rest of it unfortunately is gone forever Welcome Ted Lasso gang. Welcome to episode 11 of season two. We got one more episode after this to wrap up season two. Season two has been amazing so far. Last episode, Lord have mercy. That was amazing. But yeah, let's continue checking out that fire that is Ted Lasso. Obviously season three coming right after we're done with season two. So keep it locked in. If you're not subscribed, come on, man. Join the fam, hit that like button, do all that YouTube stuff for me. And on Patreon this week, I'm gonna start watching Interview with the Vampire as well as The Wire. So if that's something you're interested in, come check us out on Patreon. Let's get this episode in. Today has been all about one man. Oh, what man? Take a bow, Sam Obi <laughs> Hat trick. Let's go. They will now enter the final match of the season, one win away from promotion back. Mm, match ball. Everything is just going right. Look at that smile. I hope they're not building him up to crash him down. Our boy wants more, man. He's missing his girl. <laughs> what are you on, bruh? Don't stop. You what is happening? It's just fear getting in the way of what you deserve. Bing bong, you ding dongs. Ted. Yeah. Guess who is going to be featured in Vanity Fair's business issue as a powerful woman on the rise? I what finally a... got it! This is incredible! I Ted! Yeah. Not you. Keely. <laughs> Ted, relax. Yeah, Vanity Fair to remember. Oh, it's just an honor to be mad fit. And... <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to speak with you, Rebecca. Okay. Who is Edwin Nakufu? Father owns the largest tech firm in Ghana. Wait a second, I thought I did. Until he died last month. I apologize for my joke. 
1.2 billion pounds and loves football. Oh. Ted brought you back from the dry cleaners. Oh, it's my suit. The second Ted gave it to me. Oh, this bitch. Okay, my suit, Will. Right. Oi, are my eyebrows crazy? I got to do a photo shoot with Keely tonight, and the fuck. This isn't black. This is dark heavered charcoal. Ooh, I love hearing fellas debate fashion. Who's winning? <laughs> so Jamie and Danny ain't gonna play? Mm, they do, but they play in midfield where no one expects them to be. Hmm. I see. That's fun. Okay, today let's go ahead and try out your fake nine. Thank you. <laughs> do you guys ever want to be in charge? Get all the credit. What did fucking Rupert say in your ear at that funeral? Knowing Rupert, it probably was some shit like, I've been seeing a lot of you lately and been hearing how good your strategies are, but I don't think you should be second place or even third or fourth place. I think you should run your own club or manage your own club. Some diabolical shit like that, just so, so in doubt into Nate, who is someone who unfortunately went through a lot of bullying and probably sees that as the only way to as the only version of like power because boy anytime i see him talk to anyone in such a harsh mean way it mm, it's it gives me the ache heavily um but you know yeah i want to know what rupert told him because I mean, he's not even hiding it at this point. Like, he's talking to Beard and Roy, asking them, like, you know, you want to take charge, like, take the credit and stuff like that, boy. I mean, I kind of see where this storyline is going, but I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. All right. Obviously, the episode started with Sam getting a hat trick, which I feel in a lot of ways just indicated how good of a player he's been and how his uprising has been uh, <laughs> very prominent and in the next scene we obviously see him kind of getting a text from rebecca but we could also see that he is missing uh rebecca a lot and of course we get to meet the new <laughs> the billionaire from ghana that essentially came to ask for adesanya's uh, hand in marriage <laughs> to come play for his club uh tremendous entrance obviously ted not getting him not getting a lot of test jokes uh that was excellent to see and they continued their beautiful team building and i feel like this is where the episode started getting into amazing territory where um the billionaire essentially told rebecca his plans uh of wanting to not just buy the team or not buy the team but get sam uh to go play for a team in africa and around this area i kind of talked about how much pressure rebecca is in because obviously she doesn't want to let sam go because of her feelings for sam but at the same time you know that she's the kind of woman that would respect his decision because she knows what it feels like to be in a relationship where like you don't have your way because someone more powerful than you or someone who is abusive is taking advantage of, of their power over you. And what he was offering the billionaire was something that she already knows was going to be so enticing to Sam because he will get a chance to play closer to his home, closer to his family. He'll be able to, you know, I talked about in the reaction, God, this video. I talked about in the reaction how like as someone who's been away from home for 10 years i can absolutely understand that feeling of wanting to be closer to your family uh wanting to be near them to be part of your culture again and stuff like that and how rebecca is feeling so much pressure because she knows there's a big chance sam might um take this billionaire on his deal and go to the club Next was this conversation between uh, between Roy Kent and his niece's teacher. There seemed to be some kind of weird energy here. And obviously, because I'm just reviewing instead of reacting, you guys can probably not spot or will not see 
all my little like faces I was making during this moment like it seems like something is going on here and obviously the nail on the head was later when she asked Roy are you married and Roy did not respond responded with no I'm not married and immediately my eye just gouged you open because I was like and like typically when you say i'm not married it should be followed up with but i'm seeing this lovely lady at the moment or i have a girlfriend but he didn't say anything and it kind of left things in the air in this weird way where i was like i didn't quite uh like that very much this scene of rebecca coming to tell ted that she's seen um sam and how she feels about sam leaving but also don't want her to leave was such a human moment and i was yelling in this moment the moment that ted came and stood right next to her and i paused the video and i was like the last time the two of you stood like this my eyes were leaking because that's one of my favorite episodes season one episode nine if i'm not mistaken called apologies where rebecca finally told um ted everything and sure enough right after ted mentioned that that the last time we were here same time same uh situation last year and rebecca told him see you next year and it's just one of those moments that you just love ted lasso and like all the little callbacks it does it was a beautiful scene and I mean, with every scene I talk about, I am going to be so hurt that my file got corrupted and the audio uh, did not play during that scene. And next, of course, we have the scene of Nate um, and Kaylee at the shop uh, getting a new coat for him. And I, st I talked a lot about this scene, about how you know Kaylee helping Nate out and they had this beautiful conversation about how people like us come from the gutters and not from the gutters people like us have to work so hard to make it out of the mud and like we deserve to be at the top and I talked about how I love how in stories when two characters are having a conversation and one character is giving the other advice like good advice but based on what the second character is going through in their life at the moment that good advice is misconstrued as something else like if for instance nate was obviously thinking about like ruining the team or like what he ended up doing to ted right but kaylee was just talking about how like people like us like we have a spot up there we should go get it but to him what he was hearing is like i should go on with this devious plan of mine and i loved that whole dynamic there and out of nowhere out of nowhere she kissed him uh he kissed he kissed her and that kiss was like after he went back into the closet and did his whole superman thing and spat on the mirror like i talked about how one of my patreons um really analyzed and like dissected like what is going on with like um nate this season about how he is how he has gone through so much trauma with like his dad and trying to prove his dad and his bullying problem like the bullying that was done onto him and how people always treated him and how that has this sense of like has taken over him essentially he hates himself that the only way he can like power up or you know give himself some strength is to literally spit on himself that there's a lot of like self-hate in there like self-image issues in there obviously i can't do it justice as much as she broke it down but like i really loved that angle and you cannot sympathize with like a character like nate of course everything he's doing is ugly but at the back of your mind you're like god damn i feel bad for this kid you know it's kind of like drake right now with everything kendrick is doing to him and did to him it's like you deserve it but god damn you must feel so empty i feel bad for you in a way and next obviously we saw the billionaire like buttering up uh sam taking him to a nigerian restaurant with his chefs like taking him to the museum like showing him a nigerian artist work in the museum that he bought 
and bought the whole museum, you know, enticing Sam. And for a minute there, I thought Sam was gone because it is such a good deal, you know. But at the same time, Sam's heart is here with the team, with Rebecca, of course. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure uh, involved there. Um, yeah, I talked a little bit about uh, having this little moment with the teacher, not fully telling her that he's not single. And um, yeah, oh God, all the things I loved about Rebecca and Ted, Ted going to Rebecca's house to confront her, not Rebecca, Dr. Sharon, to confront her for not... Um, saying goodbye and it, it's another beautiful thing about how both of them are so similar in a lot of ways like goodbye is hard for them because ted talked about you know family in the past that was hard for him to say goodbye to as well as sharon saying the same thing and there's this beautiful moment in here where ted finally started reading the letter and the acting was like so top notch because you could see his face let me let me open it you could see his face going from a smile to a little chuckle to a laughter to happiness and to sorrow and then i further talked about how like this show is so well written and the characters are so well fledged out that like sometimes you forget and you only compliment the individual characters but i talked about how the characters as a pair is so it's so fun to like dissect because obviously they're the obvious favorites like rebecca and kaylee and rebecca and ted like their um pairing them as a pair is so good to watch but i focused on like um dr sharon and uh ted here about how them together as cast members and as actors and as their characters they are playing it they're just so perfect they complement each other so much and obviously this went into their um hangout at the bar and everything that came later i am so mad that you guys couldn't get my full reaction to this and i loved everything about um this whole boss lady arc that uh kaylee's going on on and how you know she had you know some nerves and how she was feeling a lot of pressure over it and and roy coming to join the photo shoot um really helped give her some beautiful motivation some sweet motivation like he got down on his knees in front of her and reminded her of who she is and all her strengths and stuff and i was it was blowing my mind because like i in the reaction i talked about how literally me and my wife had a similar situation this morning when she was going for a job interview and obviously like all of us we have those nerves a little bit and i kind of told her something similar i'm like you're awesome like your personality will take you far in this like you just go there and appear as yourself you've done the work the prep and all these things and i just love how this show has a way of always like like just bringing out something that i'm either thinking of or going through at the moment like this show has been such a wonderful gift i love that connection between them i also talked about how like relationships can be difficult but not difficult in the sense of i don't want to do that because it's hard work difficult in the sense that the analogy i use is that it's like a garden right a garden needs time to water to take out all the weeds to take care of the plants and everything so like that's the kind of work i mean when it comes to good relationships especially so i love that roy and kaylee kind of show us that and obviously kaylee's photo shoot was cream de la cream it was amazing i loved it um moving on yes and at the end of their shot when they had this face-to-face -face break and because throughout the episode i mean i know talking about it right now might seem that i just have all these thoughts because of hindsight 
but like while the episode was going on there was it was it was making me itch a little bit the fact that like the first time kaylee saw roy she didn't tell him about what happened the kiss between nate and her and also the fact that roy didn't tell her that he omitted to tell another woman that like he was seeing someone like as a married man as a person who has a partner like if someone asks you tell them the full thing are you married yes even when i wasn't married are you married no but i have a partner we've been together for five years like don't leave that shit floating in the air because people can misread that people can see that as a moment to make an advancement which is fair game because you did not tell them you know and then it might cause like an ugly situation another thing about relationships being tough sometimes is that they require very tough conversations which is okay and is good if it's happening in like a healthy environment where you guys both know that hey man we're not against each other we're on the same team let's just talk about this and you know kaylee having that conversation with roy like telling her that hey nate kissed me today it was nothing and roy the understanding man that he is was like oh nothing happened that must have been awkward for him that must have been an awkward situation you know and roy being the stand-up guy he is he also told her about what happened with his niece's teacher that she asked if i was married i said no and i didn't say anything else and kelly felt some kind of way but i love that moment because they were both being vulnerable and loving on each other and actually like having that honest conversation but then kelly dropped the bomb about what jamie told her during the wedding that he still loved her and you could see how that totally wrecked it totally wrecked everything not wrecked but like it just threw a wrench in there because like again i paused that's when i paused the video and went into jamie's head again i'm like jamie that is not just something you do you don't tell someone who is happily in a relationship that you love them because it's just bringing extra drama not just drama as in drama but it's just bringing extra load that like no one wants to deal with take that to your fucking grave go tell that to a mirror or something so like i really got off on jamie here again because they had a hard conversation yes but a hard conversation that they could have gone over you know they could have gone over it and be like hey this happened this happened but that extra you know drama from jamie i feel that really hit roy a lot and in the moment when i was watching i was like there's another added layer to this because kaylee was so anxious about this photo shoot and now it's literally ruined because they had that beautiful moment of conversation and honesty which was good and they were pretty much fine with it on both sides until the jamie thing landed on top of their heads um moving on ted dr sharon with their prolonged goodbye it was beautiful it was honest um they made a lot of jokes about pitbull and everything and obviously ted got her back ted pretended he was going to the bathroom and left her a note <laughs> and i love that moment when rebecca uh dr sharon looked at the note and she was like shit like he stole my move <laughs> Like, I love that scene so much. I love Rebecca. And I was talking about how, like, I wish Rebecca was a constant stay in the season. Like, I wish she stayed. Did I call her Rebecca again? Dr. Sharon. That I wanted Dr. Sharon to stay. Um, but it almost seems like her time is up on the team. I really miss her already. I love her um, connection with Ted, with the team, and everyone else. God... I know it's going to suck to you guys that um, <laughs> that you guys are getting a review from me instead of a reaction. But I promise you, I am so hurt that like this happened, that I made this mistake. Because you know when you shoot a video and you're like, this is one of them ones. Like these people who love watching my videos and having these conversations, they're going to love this one and then something like that happens <laughs> yes and finally rebecca coming to sam's crib and i respect it you know she came and told him in person 
that um i can't stop you from going or anything but like personally i just hope you don't or i wish you don't it was very honest it wasn't manipulative but the pressure is still heavy just for the simple fact that uh sam is such a good man he's such a considerate man and like if he was an asshole like there would not be pressure he won't be worried about it but he's so concerned for her feelings and her emotions and how <clears throat> she's feeling as well that like it's almost 50 50 with his own needs and if he wants to go or stay so i really love that she came in person and talked to him but at the same time that was pressure that was all i could say during that scene pressure 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 and obviously the episode ended with uh <clears throat> trent being the real g he is telling nate that like telling him that nate exposed him and he is going to release that because that's just on principle like that's his job and i was so mad at this because nate you know how people treat mental health in the general public and that is something that was ted's truth to say not yours it made me started hating nate a lot but honestly i still reserve space for him knowing what he's been through is not an excuse but an explanation you know and obviously if you watch episode 12 after this you hear my full thoughts on everything in real time um and that was the episode i don't know how this will go but is the best i could do because i mean i can't sit down here and pretend like i haven't watched the episode and react to it all over it's i i can't do that is impossible but um i hope this uh was sufficient at least you got to hear all my thoughts this video is about 26 minutes so for those of you who want to hear my thoughts i hope this was uh plentiful for you i appreciate it and i will make sure something like this doesn't arise anymore and um episode 12 coming up season finale of ted lasso season two i'm not gonna say much but just take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone who's been on this journey with me uh the viewers on patreon on youtube my editor everyone who's been on this journey it's been amazing just to share with you guys my editor loves this show so much <laughs> that we talk about it all the time it's like it's crazy when the person working on the videos love it just as much as you do that like he can't even wait for me to watch more and send over to him <laughs> it's, it's been so good it's been a blast a lot happened last episode I mean a lot. Um, so let's see how this uh, season takes it home. Thanks for all the support you have been sending. Keep liking the video. Keep sharing your thoughts. Keep subscribing. If you want to hop on the Patreon, keep doing that as well. I'm going to start season three ASAP. So the videos will be up on Patreon. Speaking about Patreon, I'm also starting The Wire and Interview with the Vampire. So if that's something you're interested in, come check it out. I appreciate you guys. Let's get it. It's Friday. Glad you could join us. I'm your host, Jeff Stelling, here with Chris Kamara. Change at West Ham United. But first, we turn our attention to the championship and AFC Richmond colleague, Roy Kent. <laughs> Tottenham match this season, not due to stomach problems, but because of a panic attack. It appears to be uh, the evening. George. Lasso's clearly not fit to go. Shut up. Oh, George, be compassionate. Oh, come. Of course you'd say that. Yeah, turn that shit off, man. <laughs> Aww. Hi, Ted. Remember, the truth will set you free. But first it'll piss you off. Mmm. to talk. I love that. <laughs> this is so sweet. <laughs> Europe. Europe who? <laughs> You're obviously fine. She knows him too well. Okay, this is too much. Yeah. 
Are you all right, Ted? Yes, ma'am. I mean, this is the worst case scenario for someone who has panic attacks. It's like now your day is filled with anxiety and panic inducing confrontations from people. Nate is such a bitch, man. Like something someone confided in you and told you, you're just going to put that out there, knowing how society views mental health in general. I won't be surprised if he has another panic attack. The coach. <sighs> mm -hmm. right. oh. Some peace. Thank you. Sorry for your loss. You must have heard about your father's passing. I've not finished, but we will give Sam a very good home in Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> Any rumblings about which way Sam's leaning? Not a peep. And I'm trying to play it chill. Mm. So whenever I see him in a hallway, I just give him a cool nod. You know, like this. <laughs> oh, shit, that was cool. I know, right? I saw it in a Denzel Washington movie and I thought, oh, Stop. I'm taking that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you know that you have our full support. I appreciate that. I still wish I could have done something before that dick Trent Crim posted the article. Oh, no, come on. Trent's a good guy. He's just doing the gig. Well, don't worry. I'm going to speak directly to the owner of the paper and see who this anonymous source was. Oh, he knows. Fact is, everything they said was true. Please don't lose Ted, I beg you. Hey, don't you worry. <laughs> Please, uh, guys, I I'm sure by now you guys already know we have this pact. We have this agreement that because of my lack of understanding for some U.S. Um, what is it called? Pop culture references because I didn't grow up here. I hope you guys know we already have this pact and agreement that you guys are going to fill me in. Because you all have been doing a great job. Especially in the rom-com episode <laughs> with Roy. So a lot of these are going over my head. Even though the you know, comedic timing and how they're written hits. There's that uh, context that is missing. So please fill me in as much as you are willing to. Heather Lockley are on Melrose Place, right? Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Right? I have no idea what that is. Yeah. Oh, Heather. Man like Sam. Wow. He sent the shirt and number and everything. That's a little bit controlling, but. Mm. Hey, morning. Morning, Nate. Um, it's Roy here. No. You seen this? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, yes. I, oh, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. He already knows. Oh, boy. Um, Jamie's looking for you. Oh, is he? He's looking for Jamie, too. Can I, can I just say something first? Yeah, okay. That's a good idea, because when I'm done, you won't have any teeth left, and you'll need them for the talking bit. I told Keela that I still loved her. It was wrong, and I shouldn't have done it, but... It, it just, it did something to me. But I just need you to know that I respect you, and, and I respect Keela, and I respect your relationship, and I will never, ever do anything like that ever again. He was nice about it. <laughs> you know, like, you know, Roy was ready to, you know, but it's hard to do that when the person reacts or acts in the exact opposite way to fuel your rage some more i'm trying to i'm trying to go deep inside my cranium to think about why what jamie did bothered me so much i mean emotions feelings relationships are already complicated enough and to just drop that on someone is just like unwanted, unnecessary, not drama as in drama, but just that's a lot to offload on someone, especially someone you've had a previous connection to. It's the same reason why you don't, sometimes you try not to tell people that you're interested in, that you are, for reasons that, because like if it can happen, 
and you're sure that it can happen, what's the point of even letting them know sometimes? So that they miss you, so that they long for you? You know, like imagine you're leaving the country in two weeks and there's someone you really like. I can see how it might be poetic to let them know before you leave, just to get it out. But at the same time, you're hinting to that, not even hinting, you're letting that person know that this might be nice, but it can't happen because I'm leaving. You're leaving that person in like a very weird positions where they're longing for you or like it's going to be at the back of their mind. Even worse, if that person is in a relationship, like, okay, okay, he did apologize and he knew what he did was wrong, but it's like, low-key, the damage have already been done. Let's move on. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of froze when you two came in here and I, I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Holy f oh my. Is the article out already? Y'all found out about something from somewhere when you should have found out about it from me first. But I chose not to tell y'all. So, fellas, we make a lot of choices in our lives. Am I really about to eat something called Greek yogurt? Mm. To <laughs> family and take a job halfway around the world. Mm. Forthright with y'all. That was a bad choice. Because every choice is a chance, fellas. Mm. Now I hope y'all can forgive me for what I've done. Mm. We got you, we got coach. you, coach. We got you. Fellas, look, I'm gonna nip that talk in the butt right now. It's butt, not butt, coach. <laughs> exactly. I said that last episode. This is mascot idol semi-finals. One of these two contestants will be our new mascot. Best <laughs> <laughs> about you. Huge fan. Oh, thanks. Huge. <laughs> Let her go. Something wrong? Something is incredibly right. The money people that back banter, they want to finance me opening my own PR firm. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> I need some advice. I'm scared of telling Rebecca I'm leaving. Oh, right, yeah. Man. She's so intimidating. No. Because she's a friend. And you leaving would be a betrayal on a level usually reserved for Greek mythology. I don't want to appear like I'm not grateful for the amazing opportunity she's given me here. Mm. Keely, a good mentor hopes you will move on. A great mentor knows you will. Mm. The universe has always put me on the right path. The universe told me to marry your mother 2009. 2009! <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Universe, give him a f***ing sign right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That might be a red herring too. Jamie apologized to me for what he said to you at the funeral. I didn't say anything. I know. He said he did it on his own. Mm-hmm. Fucking forgave him. Mm. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, it's actually really sweet. Opening my own pee firm. That is you. What? <laughs> Look at you, the boss. And obviously there's a easy contrast there between her and Nate. Because, you know, she kind of grouped both of them together last episode, talking about how people like them have to, like, make it out of the mud. And you can almost tell Nate is going about it all the wrong ways. And Kaylee is doing it all the right ways. Is it just me or is Nate's hair getting grayer and grayer? I think it's die. I don't think he aged so suddenly through the season. You gotta be hair dye, right? Wow. <laughs> Come on. I didn't use any of the pictures with you in them. You gonna say anything? Well, I mean, eventually, yeah. You may have noticed through the years that I can be quite loquacious. No, to Nate, the anonymous source. Oh. <laughs> Some people need a little push. Mm. Oh, I'm pushing nobody. Coach, you keep trying to hold all this in. I'm afraid your mustache is going to pop off. <laughs> That's true. Having positive friends is so underrated. Have you got a second? I'm so sorry. No, don't be. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> mm. Their friendship is <laughs> top notch. 
if it's just brought West Ham United. And to think for a second, I thought him giving me his shares in the club was a kind gesture. You know, I'm actually quite reassured to find out that he is still just a selfish, conniving fuck. You will not go and work for him. He can't have fooled me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hire your best friend. Mm. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and that 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 is just another beautiful way sound like a broken record man but this women loving on each other the same way women love on each other in real life uh, boy you almost never see that in a lot of media hire your best friend and like higgins always have like great advice um throughout everything of how did he put it a good leader or a good boss hopes you grow or surpass them and a great boss knows you will or something like that it's so true oh i just realized how that plays into rebecca's wishes for sam as well like her figuring out or like her being at peace with whatever he chooses to be best for him if that is uh leaving richmond and joining the club rupert just bought west ham we all see where this is going right we all good to go on running nate's false nine today yeah you'd be fools not to yeah what kind of attitude is that i could uh use advice advice hold on <laughs> Remember I told you I had to do that photo shoot thing with Keely? Oh, yeah, 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 we got that. And use a single picture with me in it. She looks so f***ing great on her own. Mm-hmm. Nate, are you gonna go tell this to a reporter as well? Freaking mole. Like, I can't even trust him. I'm sure you guys see this smile disappear from my face anytime the camera goes on him. <laughs> if you don't have something nice to say, don't say nothing at all. So I'm not gonna say nothing at all for now. Keely and I went shopping the other day. I kissed her. She told me about it. There it is me right now. I felt that eye roll in my chest. You feel me? Beard is me right now. He hid that eye roll from hell, boy. Check this out. It's okay. No, no, I deserve to be headbutted. I'd be happy to headbutt you, Nate. Mm. Oh, that's a wrap. As a wrap. Brentford. Coach and I are having a little debate. We want to get y'all to take it. Should we stick with the false nine or switch it up? <laughs> That's giving them a lot of power. It will work. Hey, Jan Ma says he knows the truth, right? I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> he wouldn't. <laughs> okay, Isaac. Mm. Mm, look at that smile. Or you want to go spit on yourself? Hey, Nate. Everything okay? Yes, Ted. Everything is okay. Huh? What have I got to learn? You want to know what you did? You made me feel like I was the most important person in the whole world. You abandoned me. What? And I, I worked my ass off trying to get your attention back. The great Ted Lasso. Well, I, I think you're a fucking joke. Wow. It's back to Kansas where you fucking belong with your, with your son. Oh, you're crossing a line. Just fuck you, Ted. Nah, you just coming from a place of hate, freaking misunderstanding. I can't gel with that. My guy, you were a water boy. Ted talked to boss lady and made you an assistant coach. And this is not on some you should be grateful type of energy because that is obvious. But it's like, realistically, like, what were you expecting? Is like, you are an assistant coach that the head coach which is ted was open enough to even take your advice and use it constantly something that like normally is a no-no that they wouldn't even consider so is it that you just wanted more or because am i missing something it's like ted never treated nate poorly from day one so is it a thing of him wanting more acknowledgement and the first part of that conversation, it almost felt like he was talking to his father because his father is the one he's always trying to impress that nothing he does is ever good enough for his father. 
that boy needs Dr. Sharon right about now. All those, all that resentment was just bubbling in. I do feel bad for him, but at the same time, fuck you, man. Like, this is... I hope he finds his way back, man, but this was... That's lovely from Tart. <laughs> Let's go, Sam. He scored! Done. Yes! Ted is even giving him props like nothing happened. I'm so my mind is cracking because like I'm I'm just trying to figure this out. I mean you guys already know this sometimes, but like when it comes to like just behaviors of like certain men, I think I've just had too much personal trauma of seeing like some men in my life like just turn from the kind people they were into some of the like most like ridiculous misogynistic Andrew Tate type of human being and like um because is it that Nate is just so used to being abused that some part of Ted makes him feel like something he's not or like something he can't attain and that like irritates the hell out of him because I mean the second half of that conversation he went in saying stuff like um you're Ted Lasso, everybody loves you. You know, it's like, you can tell that something he yearns for and he doesn't have and is eating as it, at his soul. Because right after Sam scored that goal, Ted tapped, tapped in on, on, the, on the knee like, yo, like, your strategy is working. And still, as if they didn't, he didn't just bark at him in there. Boy, that is crazy. Yeah. Isn't that there. offside? Yeah. Penalty. Shh. It looks like Tart is giving the ball to Rojas, who hasn't kicked a penalty since, well... The dog. It's such a beautiful callback. <laughs> R.I.P. Earl. <laughs> Football is life. Yes, sir. Nate, and I know he wouldn't want to go ruin their mood. <laughs> Tactical discipline. I'm, I don't believe my time here at Richmond is over. And, and for that reason, I have to stay. Huh? I will buy your childhood home, and I will take a <laughs> chip in every room, and then I will burn the place down. <laughs> I will never forget this disrespect. I was not expecting this to go that way. And I'm happy it did because I was just about to say during the pitch at the restaurant, he said so he loves the man Sam is, not just for his football talent. And that's why he wants to bring him here. So I thought he was going to say something like, you see, that's in that integrity is why I sought you out in the first place. Maybe down the line, we can make it happen. That was where my mind was expecting. <laughs> but this man say, you Nigerian motherfucker. <laughs> Rupert Sport West Ham United. Did it now. Hi, Rebecca. And coach. Sorry. No, no, no. Hey, Sam, go ahead. Stick around. I was getting ready to leave. I've decided to stay. <laughs> I wish I could say it was because of my feelings for you. But the truth is, I think I need to stop worrying about how others feel about me. He's talking to Rebecca through Ted. <laughs> you know that just made him 5,000 times more desirable in her eyes. <laughs> you just know. You know, I think he might have been talking to you and he was looking at me. Ah, <laughs> uh, Trent. Hey, there he is. I was worried about you. I thought you might have been in a bike accident or something. Because I am no longer a reporter. I was fired when they found out I revealed an anonymous source. I'm looking for something different. I love our chats. Mm-hmm. Oh, time skip. Tomorrow, you and I are going to a villa by the sea for six weeks. That's big. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's huge. I can't go. Don't start working six weeks. Started like a week ago. Yeah, I know. But you should go. Are we breaking up? No. Why would you say that? Of course not. I love you. 
I'm glad she gave him that reassurance. Congratulations. What's it gonna be? A Nigerian restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Another time skip. Damn. Still doesn't feel good. Mm. Um, need I say more about Nate? I don't feel like it. I feel this is a special moment in season two. Don't want to tarnish it with homeboy's face. Um, great episode. Great episode. Great finale. Happy for Sam and how his story concluded. And, you know, Sam, you can always trust him to stand on business, stand on his principles and almost always the right decisions. Nate. Um, I say Nate, Ted, he's on my mind. Um, Ted always being a good example um, of how to be human, how to be vulnerable, how to be kind. Having someone like Beard on his side, which is a very good, positive, although having some weird stories, positive uh, male figure in his corner. Um, that was great. The way the story concluded, just the way it started with uh, Rojas taking that penalty and um, making a draw and taking them to relegation was beautiful. Kaylee and Roy. Complicate, uh, relationships are complicated. When people say relationships are hard, I feel like people, some people often take that the wrong way. Hard, not in a way of I'm never going to try it. Hard in the sense that you know you gotta maintain a garden for it to remain looking beautiful you gotta dig out all the weeds you gotta water it you gotta do all those stuff that may take some tough conversations that may take compromise that may take putting someone else before you that's what people mean when they say relationships good relationships are hard just the same way being a good parent is hard um, not hard in the sense that it's unbearable and you don't want to do it, but hard in the sense that for those kids to be good, like you have to be, you know, you got to be on your game or at least do the best you can. Um, and I appreciate Roy and Kaylee's relationship because they're showing us the different ways that relationships can be hard but in a positive way they have tough conversations they have you know beautiful moments of honesty that you know is followed by beautiful uh, moments of love and tenderness and care and it's healthy and they talk and discuss and take space when they need to and all that good shit that is like essential like necessary for you know relationships like that to take uh place roy um, Nate did something shitty by exposing uh, Ted, but you know, leave it to someone like Ted to turn that into a positive to like, you know, talk about the importance of mental health in sports and mental health for men and the stigma behind it and how it's talked about. Beautiful. Like, like I consider the last two episodes as the season finale, not just this one, because they're so like connected and so similar. Um, in a lot of ways. This was great. If you've been watching this far, thank you. Um, this show, well, most of the things I watch are not, but this show has been challenging for me in the sense that it makes me think about a lot of hard things um, that I would not normally, I would say not normally think about, but it gives me an opportunity there you go. That's the best way to say it. It gives me an opportunity to chat about some deep topics, some important topics, some topics that even overlap with my personal life or my own trauma or my own childhood or my own perception of the world and this, that, and the third. So, like, I love this show. It's been motivational for me. It's been empowering. It's been eye-opening and highly educational as well. And, um... It's also helped me do some introspection into my life. Like, how do I navigate topics like that? How do I deal with my own issues, with my own trauma? How do I deal with um, 
moments in my life that I'm inadequate either because of my fault or the universe's fault and different things like that so I really love it and for all of you who have been very vocal about your mutual love for the show and how we all connect with it thank you for um coming on this platform either on patreon or youtube and just chatting about it i read all your comments um i answer as much as i can i always appreciate the connections we have and i'm sure by the time you're watching this on youtube season three will probably have started on patreon because you know ted lasso is hot it is it's hot it's it's just too good shout out to everybody shout out to costas my editor you're awesome bruh peace